What's up, besties? In this video, I'm going to guide you through auscultation of heart sounds. It's a critical component for any head-to-toe assessment. Let's get started. When we listen to heart sounds, we do so by positioning our stethoscope over five key areas corresponding to heart valves. To simplify remembering these locations, we use the mnemonic 8 to man or all people enjoy Time Magazine. Each initial letter represents a valve location with the exception of enjoy in our all people enjoy Time Magazine mnemonic. This actually points to herbs point. It's a midpoint between the heart's base and the heart's apex, but there is no valves present at this location. Here, the A stands for aortic, the P stands for pulmonic, the T stands for tricuspid, and the M stands for our mitral valve. Let's get started with our live demonstration of how we accomplish this. So the number one tip before you start any assessment is you want to make sure that you warm the stethoscope up in your hand so it's not cold when it's touching the patient. I typically just put it in my hand or usually I'll put it in my pocket. Whatever the case works for you, just make sure that it's warm. So using the diaphragm of our stethoscope, let's start by locating the right sternal border at the second intercostal space. So here's how we're going to do it. First, we're going to locate the sternal notch at the top of our sternum. Then we're going to move a little bit lower down to get to that angle of Louis, And then we're going to slightly shift to the right. This is going to bring us to our second intercostal space, precisely where you're going to be listening to the aortic valve sounds. So as you listen in this area, you want to make sure you're listening for that full love dub, love dub sound, also known medically as S1 and S2. In this specific location, we're going to hear the dub sound, the S2. It's going to be much more pronounced. The reason the S2 sound is louder is it corresponds with the closure of our semilunar valves, which we know as our aortic and our pulmonic valves. This happens at the end of systole and is the phase of the heart cycle when it contracts and pumps blood out of its chambers. Next, we're going to move slightly to the left for our pulmonic valve, which is located at our second intercostal space left sternal border. Again, this area, the S2 is going to be more prominent because of the closure of the semilunar valve. And next, we're going to descend slightly lower to our third intercostal space, also known as herbs point. At this location, we're not listening for a specific valve, but it does give us a midway point between the base and the apex of the heart. So we should be able to hear S1 and S2 both prominently. Following that, we'll proceed to the fourth intercostal space. That is where we're going to hear our tricuspid valve. And here, that lub sound, that S1 sound, is going to be more pronounced, indicating that now we're listening to our atrioventricular valve closures at the start of the stilly. We're going to finish at the fifth intercostal space along the midclavicular line. This is a site where we're going to auscultate the mitral valve. So you find the midclavicular line by dividing the clavicle into two and then just following that line all the way down until you get to that fifth intercostal space. So once again, that S1 sound is going to be noticeably louder in this area because it is an atrioventricular valve. This is also the spot that's significant because it represents the point of maximal impulse, also known as PMI. And this is where the apical pulse is going to be best heard. So if we're going to use this location as a point when we need to give medications like cardiac glycosides, also known as digoxin. You want to listen to the apical pulse counting for at least a full minute when we're giving these kinds of medications. In adults, a normal apical pulse should range between 60 to 100 beats per minute. So following this entire assessment, we're going to want to switch our stethoscope around so that we can listen to all of those points with the bell of our stethoscope. In this particular assessment, we want to focus on detecting heart murmurs by categorizing any swishing, any blowing, any kind of abnormal sounds that we wouldn't want to hear on a normal assessment. Real quick, I'm going to pop something up on your screen. It is a cheat sheet of where all the valves are located and what you're going to be hearing in those particular locations. I hope that this video is helpful in understanding how we auscultate heart sounds. As always, if you have any questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com where there's a ton of additional resources to help you get you through nursing school. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!